What's up, guys? Welcome back. We are back today with how to structure your YouTube slash TikTok videos. Obviously, they are completely different. We have YouTube videos, which are about, you know, it can be anything from like, you know, 60 seconds to 10 minutes, 20 minutes long. And TikTok are usually under 60 seconds. Also, we have uh, YouTube shorts, which can be used as TikTok videos as well. Uh, because they they are on the 60 seconds as well uh we're gonna go through first like kind of like youtube we're gonna kind of like mix both of them and we're gonna tell you what's important on which on either youtube or tiktok so first things first uh, i'm gonna be commenting and saying you know the first point that i'm gonna be pointing out here and also before we continue we have our good friends today two mentors of the team lbg who are the amazing Orcosaurus and the also amazing Mr. Nesker Nusser, who are both with me today. They're going to be helping me out with this. And we are going to go through um, all the, everything, all, every single thing uh, on this tutorial. So the first thing first, uh, we're going to begin with the hook. So hook at the beginning like this actually kind of like goes more into youtube videos so we're gonna put this into youtube because obviously this works a lot better on youtube because of the length of the video it allows you to have a hook at the beginning so with the hook at the beginning what i'm trying to say is having something that you actually talk about uh, you know the, the first 15 seconds are the most important um you know the most important the most important time for a either youtube or tiktok obviously tiktok is a lot shorter tiktok is probably about five seconds uh, but the first 15 seconds uh is very important on youtube so having a hook at the beginning kind of like showing a part of your uh video at the beginning which is very important and will hook the people into your video later on uh, for that video, which is going to be like 10 minutes long. So Orcosaurus is one of the people that I actually see doing this. Uh, and Orcosaurus, you can actually talk about uh, something that you can use, for example, in one of your videos. You have at the beginning this type of like a small clip of that video that you are showing off a little bit of what's going on and then you go with the intro, isn't it? Yes. Basically, so, what I do is like I I select like a funny scene or a very well played scene in the in the vastness of my video. I put it in front, and then um, I also construct a short out of it. So to advertise the video itself, and uh, yeah, that that's basically it. Like I I have a hook there goes for like 30 seconds then i do my intro i do my shtick and that's it yeah also that's actually it, yeah. it's very it's very important to do that uh, on your youtube videos yeah. if they're not performing well it's, it's extremely important to have a hook at the beginning of the video where you can actually have that little clip which is in the middle of your video something that is funny something that is actually really important on your video or something that you if, let's just say you're doing a review about the new iphone 13 or something and there is a specific thing that you want to show something that is like probably the most important feature of the iphone or something that you're talking about that would be an amazing idea to have that segment that 10 seconds five second segment at the beginning of your video which will hook people into your video so people see this and now they want to watch your entire video right with that said we're gonna go on to the second part which is actually what we just talked about is the intro so that goes for both uh, YouTube and Facebook. I mean, on Twitter and TikTok. So basically, with um, with that, the, the main reason why I'm not talking about the hook at the beginning of your TikTok is because on TikTok you don't usually have time for it, and the hook on TikTok is gonna be your intro. So. TikTok hook and intro is basically the same thing for TikTok. So you're going to have to hook somebody within your, basically within your first 15 seconds of your first 10 seconds of your video. And the way, the good practice to do this on TikTok, for example, is introducing yourself. 
like if you are gonna be talking about something what type of like uh, what type of content creator you are and what are you gonna be talking about if you're gonna be talking about let's just say you uh, you are like a marketing uh, expert so basically if you are doing your content based on marketing you actually can go into introducing yourself hey this is my name uh, i'm a marketing expert i work with this company and this company and you know today i'm gonna be showing you how to you know create a tiktok regarding this specific thing so kind of like that introduction within the first five ten seconds of your tiktok is gonna make people want to watch you because they actually get to know who you are and they get to know what type of content you're gonna be showing within that video um with that said obviously on youtube this is gonna be your intro video which is gonna have you're gonna have your hook and then the second part that you're gonna do after the hook is you know obviously your introduction your kind of like a, your intro to your video your logo or whatever you're gonna have on the introduction or like a, a transition or something like that um right after that we're gonna go with the third point uh do we have um something that you would like uh nesker something between um uh, your hook and do you work much on your tiktok yourself that's good uh, as far as like working on it i've done a lot of like experimenting with different ways to start videos uh different performance levels for the videos based on how i started it or you know what is in the video content wise length etc uh honestly I don't run a hook on TikTok. The videos are meant to be short, 15, 45 seconds a lot of the time. Um, YouTube, it's imperative though. It's one of those, it's the difference between somebody liking and subscribing or spending the difference between two minutes and 15 minutes in a video, most of the time. Yeah, having that, uh, it's quite important, like I said, you know, not having it on uh, TikTok is kind of like, you know, obviously your TikTok, your hook and your intro is going to be the same thing. So you can have interest in yourself, obviously. Uh, it's quite important to have that. Uh, just also depends on the type of content that you're creating, like I said, you know, uh, marketing or, or something, that, a streaming expert or, you know, streaming uh, Twitch uh, partner or something. You kind of like introduce yourself when you are talking about, you know, Twitch tips, for example. Um it's not the same to have somebody saying hey uh, you know i'm gonna give you twitch tips and not introducing themselves but maybe someone that comes in think of this you can go into a tiktok video and say you know hey what's up guys my name is robert gaming i'm a twitch partner and i've been doing a streaming for like two years and now i'm gonna give you a really quick tip about your streaming so or you know a quick tip about your intro or a quick tip about um you know i don't know about which or something so like once i get that sentence off you will most likely stick to my video at the, at the, at the until the end it's just that the way you actually structure the intro, the way you introduce yourself and you have to think about why would people want to watch me over anyone else because just the fact if you introduce yourself then you kind of like making people actually being you know making people actually being interested in your content and they're like oh i'm, I'm just gonna stay here uh, obviously you have to follow up with the content so next thing we're gonna talk about content so obviously that goes for both uh youtube and tiktok and content so what do you want to do as a content so obviously the content on your video is gonna be just depending on what the type of video that you're doing uh it's gonna be either you're doing a tutorial or you're doing a how-to video or you are doing kind of like a gameplay video obviously your content is your main uh basically the, the content is gonna be your main uh, video basically that everything is on your video so following the nice a good hook and an intro for both uh, youtube and tiktok your content has to be enjoyable has to be obviously either be uh, helpful or enjoyable or funny or whatever you are you know basing your content on but obviously you always have to think on would you watch your own video at the end of the day the best thing you can do is like 
go once you edit your whole video once you render your whole video then you go and watch it you spend your 10 15 minutes or whatever your how long your video is and it's like would you actually pay attention to the video from the beginning until the end because that's the best uh, method to actually take a look at the video evaluate your video and then from that point you can actually make modifications to the actual video i have uh, for example we're gonna be uh, giving all cosaurus here um it's gonna be probably being able to help a little bit more with this because all cosaurus actually does uh, video editing quite a lot so all cosaurus do you actually go through your videos when you finish rendering your videos or when you finish editing your videos yourself <coughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I do. I, I look at them always before I upload them to see if I have mistakes or anything that ha needs to be. Have you ever made amendments to the videos when it's finally edited? Yes, because that happens. Next, next stop, we're gonna go on to call to action. Right, so that's something I see a lot of people. This is the biggest mistake that most people do, for example. Um, don't like a lot. I don't think a lot of people like realize how important the call to action is at the end of your videos, or you know, it's it's one of the most important things that you can do because if people have been watching the video until the end or watching the video, you know, kind of like close to the end, uh, they are actually already interested in your content and they might be really intrigued by what else do you do. And call to action is one of the one, the one of the things that most most people actually forget to do, and it's very extremely important to actually let people know where they can find you, let people know that they can subscribe, they can like your video, they can share your video, and the same thing goes for TikTok, for example. On your videos, there is a, a ton of TikToks that they never mention about liking or subscribing your video you know it's kind of like it's very important to always like let them know you slide the video follow my channel it's always kind of like a, a a miss thing on every single one of the videos that i see for example most of the videos that i see and you know call, call to action is actually very important because people might not realize when you say on the video they're like oh you know what i'm actually going to follow this person and you can actually um you know hit that like button and everything so you know so a lot of people are just scrolling through and if they actually watch the whole thing if you actually mention it to them they will most likely do it um Orcosaros, what do you think about this last uh step on the call to action do you actually i i would actually so i i've seen i've seen especially when it comes to youtube different variants of it because <clears throat> Some creators, especially when it comes to um, YouTube, put it already in the front. Yeah, like that's actually that's something that has been just mentioned in, in chat. Uh, yeah. Geeks, Geeks actually just mentioned in chat. Uh, mm. uh, some people actually do the filter of the sponsor as well mm. uh, within mm. the actual call to action. Just It's not a call to action. It's more like a sponsor at the beginning of the, of the video, like within no, no, the first literally, minute. Literally a call to action, like like, subscribe and whatnot. This is especially true on YouTube. They do this also in front of the video because they also use that to do an introduction. Yeah. And uh, I I think it depends like what kind of content creator you are and what kind of want to do. Um, but I think it, the call to action can also be like at the start if we talk about YouTube, at least. I don't know so much about TikTok, but because TikTok is very time limited and the audience is very much like, I want my stuff now. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and uh, YouTube is a little bit more like uh, a little bit more, has a little bit more patience. She's a little bit. And um, you can also put the call to action at the start of the video. Definitely. But offer people the ability, and this is very important, to jump. Give them a time jump. Okay, good. Um, so, 
All right, I just amended this, so basically, it kind of like, it, it, all because I was quite right, I was actually, um, you know, I, I was kind of like based the call to action more on like TikTok and YouTube, obviously, it's, it's a nice hook to have at the beginning with your intro, like, you know, when you are doing the whole introducing yourself and talking about yourself or something, it just depends also on the hook and the introduction because maybe you're doing a tutorial. If you're doing the hook at the beginning and you're talking about the tutorial and you're introducing yourself, then it would be good to have a call to action on YouTube where you will be actually letting people know they can like and, and subscribe to your video just at the beginning because obviously you can we can think about the retention on YouTube. It's very difficult to have that retention on YouTube on all your videos and people will most likely watch the first couple of minutes of your video and the end. It's always going to be the beginning. It's actually going to be quite strong and then towards the end, you know, the scale is going to go down slowly, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter what you're talking about. Obviously, it's videos and videos, but usually like on those type, you know, and every single video, the tutorials, or you're talking about something, usually it goes up and then it goes slowly down as, you know, you get to the end of the video. So having a call to action at the beginning of a YouTube video is actually while you're introducing yourself, it would be a good idea. It doesn't take you that long. You can just, like Orcos just said, mix it up all together and just have that call to action. You know, have that call to action, which people don't even realize you're actually doing it. Just, you know, introducing it in there, like you, you feel it in there, it's like, boom, there you go. I just, you know, I just told you to, you know, subscribe and like the video and you didn't even realize that I've just said it. So, like I said, you know, call to action, most likely, obviously at the end of the YouTube, it's always nice to have that call to action because if someone is stuck with you until the end, then they will most likely be uh, more inclined to subscribe and like your video. Uh, so obviously having that call to action at the end and your TikTok, obviously there is no time to have an introduction with a call to action at the beginning because then will be, you know, the video will be too long. There will be too much going on. So obviously this is more like just at the end, it will be more like a TikTok thing. 100% having that call to action at the end rather than at the beginning. And then YouTube, you can have your call to action while you're introducing yourself. Then you have your content and then, you know, you do your call to action at the end of the video where you can just say, hey, you know, this is what I do. If you like to see more, you know, you can like, you can subscribe and just let me know what you think about this on the comment section down below. Boom. There you go. You just said it and you kind of like it, it's all kind of like uh, it flows with your, you know, with your outro as well, as well as you doing it. You know, it flows with your intro as well. So, um, like, obviously, I agree completely with what uh, Geeks is saying in chat. It kind of like, it takes me, it, it puts me off a lot when people actually do the, um, what is it, the actual sponsor thing at the beginning of the video, like in the first minute, and they're actually doing the sponsor. I get what they're doing because that sponsor is paying them to do it, and they have to do it. It puts me off big time. And I think it's just, you know, it's not wrong. It's just business. Obviously, they need to make money. And that's a good way to make money, um, you know, with those sponsors and talking about something. I mean, sometimes I've actually, uh, you know, something ha that they have been talking about. I've taken a look at uh, and something, maybe something has interested me. Um, do you like Orcosaurus? Do you actually... Um, does it put you off as well when they do this sponsor at the beginning? I never listen to that. I actually do not care. Uh, what about you, Nesco? Uh, I mean, like you just said, it's uh, it's part of the business. It's part. I mean, I don't have any sponsorships myself, so I don't exactly understand. But all the same, those people are making money. Those companies are paying them for their content up front as long as that is in there. So I understand that. I do want to add to what Orko said uh, about the time jumps as far as that goes, especially if you're going to be putting a relatively long video up. Having chapters in a YouTube video is extremely important, uh, especially if you're going to put a clip or something up front like you were talking about with him before. Uh, if they want to see a certain part of an instructional video, that's all they want to see. Waiting through 20 minutes of video a lot of people won't do so giving them those chapters those jump points to hit in your video with bullet points um is a huge part of youtube these days and it's extremely important yeah yeah because a lot of people just want to see uh or just want to go in 
Uh, see the main point or the main segment of the video and then leave as well. That That's a bit of a problem, I think, on the YouTube platform because a lot of people are just like skimming through the video and then leave. But yeah. Okay, so uh, that's actually a great point. Just having those timestamps is actually really helpful and it's going to make people kind of like... It also helps with your algorithm on, on, on Google. Uh, because if there is a specific thing that you're talking about, Google will actually post that algorithm uh, depending on the search of the people. So if you're talking about something specific, they will push it. Uh, that's actually quite good. That's a, a really good point, uh, Nesker, because it's actually quite important, in my opinion, that you have those timestamps if you have, a, obviously, a long uh, a long video uh, right so to end this we're gonna be talking about the last point which is gonna be um, yeah you guess the thumbnails slash description and hashtags um, you know kind of like uh, that's you know it's it, it's just in my opinion there is so many people that overlook the, the like the thumbnail and it's actually most people don't actually realize the fact that thumbnails are just as important as your video. Um, you have to actually do research and spend time with your thumbnails. A, th a good clickable thumbnail is going to have more views than the actual, uh, you know, any, you know, normal kind of like average thumbnail. And you want people to click on your content. Now, your content has to be good, obviously, but we are taking into account that your content is already good. So what you want them is to actually make them uh, click on that video because you want them to actually watch your video or, rather than everyone else, because obviously there is like a thousands and thousands of people talking about the exact same thing as you. So you want your thumbnail to be as clickable as possible. Uh, second, the description is obviously what we just said. You know, if you have a long video, it would be very important to have your you know, timestamps because Google actually uses that as a searchable content when you just type on Google something specific and they will actually so show that section of your video on Google. And having, a, obviously, that description is very important. And the third and last one is the hashtags. Having search, research, yeah, hashtags on on YouTube is actually very important. You can have up to three hashtags on your description, uh, which are regarding what you are actually talking about. And obviously the hashtags are, at, you know, obviously the hashtags at the end of uh, on, there on your video. Are, there are also, um, yes, you're right, but uh, also a tip for me, for example, if you do like Let's Plays, there's always some kind of meta going on when it comes to thumbnails. For example, when it's uh, Let's Plays, it's kind of like a screenshot at the moment, or in general, gaming content. That That is what I, I see a lot and gets a lot of clicks, uh, on YouTube at least. So doing a, a screenshot from your let's play and use that to create the thumbnail of course you have to add to it a little bit but like there's always some kind of meta going on uh what does best it changes constantly obviously but like take a look what's currently really or what gets a lot of clicks and you have the answer to your thumbnail as well so yeah. Because there's always like some kind of pattern. All right. So, yeah, this is actually quite good if you're doing um, that type of like let's play uh, gameplays. Uh, you usually go and get a um, one of those, you know, screenshots from your actual editing, you know, whatever moments you feel like it's very important or it's kind of like, you know, critical. And then use that. Uh, a screenshot and then build within that obviously not just a screenshot it's not gonna do anything but obviously you know do that screenshot and adding your audio and your face or adding your character or adding something right next to it it's gonna be kind of like attractive for everyone to uh, watch regarding um, thumbnails and hashtags anything you guys want to add uh, Nesco? Uh yeah for YouTube uh, there's actually a website. It's called TubeBuddy. Yep. Uh, it goes into a lot of what 
Orko was just talking about as far as like the meta. Uh, it will actually give you statistics based on the content that you've created. What are the uh, more pushed uh, tags, keywords, and uh, descriptors that will put your video at the top of a browse search, for instance? Um, <clears throat> those are very important. Make sure that you're using the same words in your title that you're using in your description that you're putting in your tags at the bottom. You have 500 characters that you can use for tags at the bottom of a YouTube video. Yeah. Uh, those are all use single words all put together like you did in your title. And what you'll notice is part of your title of your YouTube video will actually become bold and because the algorithm has picked that up and it's linked it to a specific, uh, what do you call it? Like a grouping yeah. of videos uh, for help or tutorials, things like that. Yeah. So it's very, very important for them. Same thing with hashtags and TikTok. Hashtags are huge. You'll see a lot of TikToks, especially the viral ones, are using the viral hashtags. Has nothing to do with the video. Levi's to go and it's a girl in a bikini. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it, at the end of the day, those hashtags are really big on driving what you see in your for you page. Hashtag for you. Hashtag FYP. Those are very, very big things on discoverability for these platforms. Doesn't necessarily means that you're going to get success out of that. But obviously those hashtags, you know, you kind of like you can mix and match. Obviously, you have to still keep your actual hashtags from uh, who are going to be uh very important for your actual content you want to have a hashtags a few hashtags that are actually your content vidiq does the same thing as tubebuddy there's basically the competition one to the other they do the same thing they research your hashtags they you know they help you out with your content they help you out with your uh, description with your titles with everything you should be trained you know you can see your retention you can see the score of each one of every single one of your videos what you should do what you should change both of them have paid versions and both of them have free versions and obviously their pricing you know varies depending on what you want to you know what you want to have like as you can see the websites are like almost exactly the same uh one to the other so you have like obviously uh different versions you have the basic the free version and then you have you know you can pay 750 39 bucks or 415 bucks uh you know it doesn't guarantee anything but they will actually you know they will actually help you out with that those hashtags and everything i personally use the basic version i don't think i need the i need to use everything else because i do my own research uh, this is basically how much do you value your time do you have time do you lack time do you, do you have a full you know full-time job and you don't really have much time you stream as well and you want to put out videos and you want to make it you know do it well do it properly then maybe the you know the the for example maybe the 39 dollars a month is the best version for you because they will actually make your life easier in terms of like they will search all your hashtags they will search all your description you know the seo title which is obviously the searchable title so they will help you with everything else uh, which obviously if you have the time you don't really need it because you can actually do a little bit of research at the beginning it's a little bit difficult but then once you get used to it you kind of like it will become easier and faster for you to do all of that so personally i don't pay for it but you can pay for it as well with that said i think this is gonna be it i think this is gonna be it for today um I think we just cover everything about, you know, how to structure your YouTube video, how to structure your TikTok videos. And if you have any more questions, please leave it on the comment section down below and make sure you like, subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything. Lord Val Gaming, you see what I did there? That's just what I just, we just spoke about this. So also, you can actually find my good friend Orcosiros, Orcosiros on twitch.tv slash the Orcosaurus, all socials, the Orcosaurus, and on YouTube, just Orcosaurus. And my good friend, uh, Nesker, where, where, can, where can we find you? YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitch, all at Nesker Newsle. There we go. That's where you can find my good friends. With that said, thank you very much all for coming. Remember, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. We do things like this. We also play Destiny and other games. Stay tuned. Tune in. We would love to see you here. Until next time, bye-bye.